Hey guys, AJ here, and in today's video I'll show you how I managed to clear floor 12 of the Neo Abyss season with 9 stars, and also go more in depth on why I do certain things, why I pick certain units, and so on, and in general what you can do to save time regardless of where you're at in terms of levels and gear. As always, there will be timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip around. Before we dive in, here's a quick rundown for team building. The main obstacle you're going to face on this floor are Geo Shields, and there are three ways you can deal with them. Geo Attacks, Claymore Attacks, and Overload. If you have two well-built Geo DPS units, you can use one for each half because they're not only great at shield breaking, but they also get a huge 75% damage bonus on this floor. I only have Ningguang built, so I used her in one team, and then Kuching in the other because she's my strongest DPS. For the team with the Geo DPS, because Ningguang is the only one of my characters who really benefits from those 75% bonus damage, it doesn't really make sense to split up the DPS across multiple units of different elements. So instead what I did is boost her as much as I could. That's why there's Bennett here for his insane attack boost. Amber, mainly for the Pyro Resonance, that's another 25% attack, but also to deal with the Electro Mage in Chamber 3. And then I also run Geo MC for the Geo Resonance, that's another 15% extra damage whenever I pick up a crystal. She also helps breaking shields and containing the charging Geo dudes with her ultimate, plus as long as you stay within her ultimate, you get 10% bonus crit rate from her Constellation 1. So that's Team 1, entirely centered around one strong Geo DPS. For the second team, because I didn't have more Geo, I had to rely on Claymore or Overload to break shields. So I threw in Xiangling for Pyro application, and then Beidou and Fischl for some Claymore attacks and very good Electro application. And in general, just pure juice here. Zero healing. Compared to last season, you don't really need much healing on floor 12 right now. There aren't any ice cages or fireballs or any of that sort, so it's more of a pure DPS race. Xiangling plus Fischl or Beidou is likely all you'll need to break the Geo Shields reliably, so the rest is up to whatever main DPS you're running. If your main DPS is Electro, bring that team in the second half because the first half has the Electro Mage, and if your main DPS is Pyro or Physical, then you'll want that unit on the first half because the second half has Pyro Agents in Chambers 2 and 3, and a Rune Guard in Chamber 1. For all other elements, either side is fine. With that out of the way, let's get started. For Chamber 1, in the first half, the only thing you'll have to deal with are Geo Shields. Like I said, I use Ningguang. She's especially good here because even her normal attacks deal Geo damage, and she might just be the best DPS unit for Floor 12 this rotation, because out of all available Geo units, she has the highest consistent DPS potential. As you challenge this first half, try to stay close to the center of the room because all enemies spawn in a circle around you and that way you don't lose time waiting for them to walk up to you. If you have Venti or Sucrose, using them here will save you a lot of time because there are so many enemies, you'll get a lot of swirl procs and the same goes for any good AoE DPS units that you may have. Even though Ningguang does have some AoE, there are better units out there so just to show you the difference, here's a clip of the same stage but with Child and Sucrose instead, and they clear the stage about twice as fast at around the same gear level. Remember, you don't necessarily have to clear all chambers with just one set of teams. You can always start over and configure your teams around individual chambers. For the second half, there are two things you can do to save time. The first is to bring an archer so that you can get more damage on the Eye of the Storm while it's flying around. And Fischl is especially good here because her raven keeps attacking the enemy even if it's in the air. I'm 
にそりゃっ姿を見せよっほっほっThe second thing you can do is to not bring a physical main DPS in this half because the rune guard has a 70% resistance to physical damage. For the first half of Chamber 2, this one is really straightforward. There aren't any shields or game mechanics that you need to pay attention to. So again, just bring Sucrose or Venti if you have them to group enemies up and bring a good AoE DPS unit if you have one. If you have enough time left, always try to end each stage with all ultimates up to make the next stage easier for you. In the second half you're facing two pyro agents. These have 50% pyro resistance, so try to use anything other than pyro to take them down. Ideally, you'll want to try and somewhat group them up and damage both at the same time. You don't need to use Anemo for that. Anything that has a knockback, like most sword user charge attacks, can help you with that. For Chamber 3, the very first thing you'll want to do after you start the challenge is to take a 90 degree turn to the left or right and run to the edge of the room. 
If you do that, the two Geo Shield dudes end up right in front of you in a position where you can start damaging both Geo Shields at the same time. After that, it's mostly about getting their shields down as fast as you can. Soon after you start attacking them, they'll try to charge at you again. So one thing you can do is to hug either the wall of the room, or if you're using Geo MC, one of the four Geo walls spawned by her ultimate, so that even if they do charge at you, they don't get very far and get stuck on one of the walls. Because we ran to the right in the beginning, we're now in a position where we can immediately start attacking one of the two potioneers without having to waste time walking around. This is good because in general you'll always want to take out immobile enemies first, in this case the two potioneers, and leave any enemies that actively follow you, like the mage here, for last. If you're running Electro DPS units, avoid bringing them here, because the mage has 70% Electro resistance. If you're having trouble with her Electro Shield attack, you can simply use Amber's Bunny to completely shut down that ability. Not only does that skill taunt the mage, but the bunny also doesn't take any damage, so you can effectively keep the mage locked in place until the shield runs out. Another reason Amber is great here is that her ultimate almost completely destroys the electro shield. You don't need any gear or levels on Amber for this to work. Mine doesn't have any artifacts either, so if you're looking for a very cheap solution to this problem, she's your girl. For the second half, we applied the same strategy as in the first half, but here we just run in a straight line to the back of the room. If you have Beto, you have a very good reason to use her in one of your teams, because one max counter takes away a big portion of the Geodude's shields, and because they always charge at you as soon as you start the challenge, you're guaranteed at least one free max counter just a few seconds in. I then use Xiangling's ult for repeated pyro application, and Beto's old and Fischl's Raven for repeated Electra application to get in as many overload reactions as possible in the shortest amount of time. As you can see, their shields disappear really damn fast, so you really don't have to feel forced to build another Geo unit just for this floor. All you really need is Xiangling, who's free, and either one of Beto or Fischl, who was free in the last event, and you'll get very similar results, if not better. Because we positioned ourselves well at the start, we can now immediately start attacking the Pyro Agent as soon as he spawns. Again, if you rely on a Pyro main DPS, you'll lose time here because of his high Pyro resistance. For this last chamber, I also got the 25% attack speed buff, which is amazing. So one last takeaway is that you can always wait for better buffs that benefit your set of characters. They rotate daily and can greatly influence your clear times. And that's already it for this video. Here I just show you my gear for reference. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you have questions, feel free to leave a comment or hit me up on Discord. I'll put my ID in the description. And thank you, as always, for watching. See you next time.
ニー冒険団出発